Gawker is reporting on some new information regarding Omar Mateen, the terrorist that killed 50 people at an LGBT club in Orlando. They say, according to witnesses, Mateen was also a regular at the club and exchanged messages with at least one gay man on a gay dating app. Damn. So they also uh, go on to say that he'd been going there for over three years and he would oftentimes sit in the corner and drink by himself and sometimes he would get belligerent and he would be kicked out. And one person remembers an incident where he pulled a knife on somebody in the club after one person in the club made a joke about religion and he got all offended. He pulled a knife out and then obviously he was kicked out. On the night of the massacre, he came in and uh, he was wearing a hat and somebody said hi to him because, again, he'd been going there for three years, so they thought he was you know, he's a regular. Oh, hey, what's going on? And he, he said he could see the look in his eyes that something was going to go down. Now, also, so this was from last night that we got this information. Later on in the night, so this was earlier in the night, later on in the night, there were uh, more stories that have come out where... People have said like, oh, I, uh, I'm gay. I have a, a, a dating app on this, you know, site or whatever. It's a site exclusively for gay people. And he had reached out to me. So, I mean, we should have seen this coming, man. We, we, we should have known. Uh, how many stories have we done where uh, we've discussed it? How the most vehemently anti-gay people have this toxic brew of religious indoctrination and fundamentalism mixed with the fact that they're struggling with their own feelings because they themselves are gay and they're attracted to the same sex. So they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to, how to make that okay. When you're, when you're brainwashed to the point that you truly, truly believe that God Almighty is frowning upon you because of who you're attracted to. But you know you're attracted to those people, the same gender. Well, that is a, just a recipe for disaster. And, you know, some pe people who are not violent, uh, you know, they may still end up being massive self-haters and they may end up setting up some sort of talk show. We've covered many of them on this show where... All they do is talk about gay people and how evil gay people are and how immoral it is and how homosexuality is based on lust, whereas heterosexuality is based on love. So you gotta avoid the lust, fight off the lust, and just get, embrace the love. And you see that there's this internal wrestling match. You know, Dan Savage says it best. He says, you can see them externalizing this internal struggle. And, you know, there's a million factors that go into it, but... If you imagine for a second we could effectively remove part of that toxic stew and we can make it so that he wasn't a a an Islamic fundamentalist and his dad didn't tell him, hey, God is going to punish uh, gay people and his dad didn't swear allegiance to the Taliban and didn't brainwash him into thinking that this was immoral and wrong. Imagine we could get rid of that aspect of this. And so then you have somebody who has uh, attraction to the same sex and there's not the counterpart in his mind that goes, this is so wrong and so evil and I don't know how to deal with this and I'm going to lash out and kill people. Now, again, he still, he's still had major, major issues. So you can argue he was the kind of personality that was prone to violence anyway. But if you get rid of that aspect of it, do you lower the chances that something like this happens? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, the takeaway is beliefs fucking matter, man. Beliefs matter. And when you're brainwashed with this kind of stuff, there is an argument that it's just flat-out child abuse. If you tell your kids from when they're little, you know, regardless of what fundamentalist religion you're talking about, oh, you need to hate the Jews, oh, you need to hate the gays, you need to hate these people and those people and hate the atheists and yada yada, well... They don't fucking know any better. You've been telling them that from when they were toddlers. So to them, it's like, and of course, it's a duh. And then when you're telling them hate gays, and then they realize at some point that, hey, I like dick. 
Well, then they're, they don't know what the fuck to do. Oh my God, I'm such a sinner. I'm so immoral. I'm so wrong. I can't control it. I'm messaging gay people on apps because I'm so interested in that, even though I'm not supposed to be. Ah! And then they fucking, some people who are prone to violence enough can lose it and fucking go shoot everybody up. So, uh, I can't stress enough how important this is. Now, again, there's other aspects to this. We've spoken about it. He had deep mental illness. And again, not all mentally ill people are violent. That should be obvious and th that bears mentioning. But he had, he had major issues in that realm. He also just couldn't connect with people. And he inherently had a violent personality, you can argue. But this is definitely a part of it. And just know that when you see the people who are most viciously and vehemently anti-gay... It's almost certainly because they're struggling with th those feelings uh, on their own, and, and you can see that struggle, but also there's the external aspect of they grew up in a context where their family, you know, parents, society, their culture, a right-wing culture tells them, this is wrong, this is bad, you can't do it. And then it, it comes out in the worst possible ways. So... I mean, the main takeaway, if I, you, if only there's somebody watching this who's in that kind of position where, hey, I, I'm, I'm gay, I'm struggling, and, but I come from this super religious background. Dude, I'm here to tell you, all that, all that shit where they tell you it's wrong is bullshit. In fact, they're wrong for telling you it's wrong. And the very simple reason why, they made it up. It's made up. Like, oh, they're taking it from dumbass holy books, whether it's the Quran or the Hadith or the Bible or whatever, about how, oh, this is so immoral. Yeah, and then at other parts in those books, there's uh, slavery and rape, and they say, totally moral! So, do you really want to believe that? You know rape is wrong. You know slavery is wrong. So, but that's okay at certain points in those books, but it's not okay to be gay? Just two consenting adults doing what they want when they're not hurting anybody else? There's nothing wrong with it, and there's no need to self-hate because you're taking an ideology that makes no sense, you're taking this mythical framework, and you're basing your life off of it. Well, I'm here to tell you it is a mythical framework, and you can dismiss it, and you don't have to feel bad about who you are.